Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. This week, I'll be looking at how you don't necessarily need to go crazy with all the approach notes and chromatics when uh, constructing a bass line through a chord progression. The root and fifth is always your friend, and it's amazing how much interest you can create just by using those two fundamental chord tones. As always, remember to visit TalkingBass.net by following the links on screen and in the info below. There you'll find the downloadable lesson material, which is usually a PDF of the sheet music and tab, and there's often an MP3 backing track too. There are over a hundred free lessons on the lesson map, all systemized and categorized for ease of navigation. And if you subscribe for free, then you'll gain access to a load of exclusive content like the scale and chord tone reference ebooks, and uh, there's much, much more too. So uh, go check it out. So this week I was teaching one of my students, Kit Jones. Hi, Kit. And she was asking me that age old question that I get asked all the time how do I make my bass lines more interesting when improvising and weaving a line through some chords? She was sick of playing just root notes and the odd fifth here and there. Now, there are all the obvious things like using chord tones, approach notes and chromatic notes, all that stuff that you've probably seen me mention in other lessons. Uh, but I had to stress to her that it's always worth trying to make the most out of a limited palette like the root and the fifth before moving on to all that other stuff. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to possibly be a little more creative with just those two notes. So first of all, let's just have a look at a basic root and fifth pattern that we might have on a chord of C major. So we're going to look at the C, third fret of the A string there. The usual go-to pattern that most people see when they think of root fifth would be root there, the C, and then G there on the next string. So fifth fret of the D string. So we've got C and G. And most people will see that pattern as that typical up two frets next string, you know, so that little shape there. And then once you've got a little pattern like that for a fifth, you can just move it from chord to chord. So if we were going to have a look at a basic chord progression, which we'll use for the remainder of this lesson as well, one, six, four, five in C major, we have the chords C major, A minor, that's chord six, F major, that's chord four, and G major, that's chord five. So if we move through that chord progression, just with that root fifth pattern, we've got root and fifth there, C and G on the C, then we can go to the A minor, so we head for the A there, so I've gone for the fifth fret of the E string, E string that is, sorry, and there's the root fifth, F, first fret of the E string, we've got F and C, and then G, third fret of the E string, G and D, so root and fifth, okay? So we're just moving that pattern from one chord to another. So. If we've got those two notes, we can incorporate them into a bass line in any way that we want. So I've got that uh, chord progression here on the backing track. So we'll just go through the backing track. First time through, I'll use the root notes only. Second time, I'll just start incorporating the fifths, okay? So this is the standard thing that most people go for. And then I'm gonna uh, expand on that. So here we are, root notes first. I just use the ad lib, you know, just going between the root and the fifth in whatever way, just relying on that basic rhythm of. And then just incorporated the root and fifth. So that's a very basic fretboard shape of root and fifth. But if we expand on that and start to look at more roots and fifths lying around in that position or, you know, all over the neck, we can start to be a little bit more adventurous and start to play lines a bit more like this.
So we're going to keep the uh, familiar root fifth pattern. So don't worry, we're not going to ditch that. But what we're going to do is expand on that. So first of all, let's have a look down here at that C again. So we've got the root and the fifth there, C and the G. But in that position there, we've also got the G an octave lower. So we have the G down here at the third fret. So that gives us the fifth below the root. So we've got the root note, the C there, and we've got the fifth below. Okay, so and that's quite a popular one. So, you know, root fifth. So you'll often get that kind of, you know, the fifth below. So root, fifth above, fifth below. And we've also got the octave of the root note up here, fifth fret of the, uh, of the G string. So we've got the C up there. So all in all, in that area, we have the C, the G, the fifth, the octave of the C up there, and we have the low G down here. So that gives us four notes to play with. We've got a palette of four notes there, just sticking to root and fifth. So that pattern is a really good pattern to you know grow accustomed to. And uh, often when I'm playing through different chord progressions, I'll keep the hand kind of in that position, you know, so that I've got the root there with the first finger, and then I've got the fourth finger hovering over the fifth and the octave. So you know, ready for uh, hitting those because these are all very uh, um, fundamental notes, you know. So we've got the fifth, the root, the fifth, and the octave. So just get used to seeing that set of notes there. So that was a pattern working from a root note on the A string, but in the chord progression we looked at, we also had an A minor, an F major, and a G major chord, so that had root notes on the E string. So let's have a look at uh, a G major. So if we were playing a G major chord, we'd go for the root note there at the third fret of the E string. So there's the G. We also have the fifth just above with that familiar root fifth pattern there. So we've got the D at the fifth fret of the A string. But then just as we did earlier, we've also got the octave of the G there at the fifth fret of the D string. So that gives us a root fifth octave pattern. And then we also have a fifth. Uh, just above there. Now this is going outside of that position a little, but it's it's okay We can just move up to get it and come back down So it just gives us a few more notes to play with so we're looking for four notes really So we've got the root note G the fifth D The root note G there fifth fret of the D string and then the D the fifth up at the seventh fret of the G string Okay, so that gives us four notes to play with so Going back to the C again, we've got the C, G, C, G, C. And then from the G, G, D, G, D. Okay? So now let's have a look at that pattern through the chord progression. So if we look at the first one, C major, just play through the C that we've already, already looked at. We had C, G below, C, G, and C. So... Then we move to A minor, so first finger goes to the A there. So we've just got those four notes. Then to the F, so first finger takes the F. And then the G. And don't worry about the fingering too much with this because, as I said, this is just a palette of notes. There's no real reason to be hitting any of them with any particular finger. You just, you know, go for whichever one you want, you know. So I might play, let's say I was on the F there, I might play the F and the C, first and fourth finger. Then I might move the first finger to the F there, and then the fourth finger to the C. Or I might play the F there with the first finger and then move up to the C with the first finger and play it like that. It all depends on context. It depends what was played before it and what was played after. So, again, moving through them, C major, that's the notes, A major, oh, it's A minor, sorry, F major, and G major. So that's our palette of notes for each chord just using roots and fifths. And uh, you'll notice that I made a little error there. I said A major instead of A minor. It really doesn't matter because with major and minor chords, uh, triads, seventh chords, major seven, minor seven, dominant seven, all of those, it's the same root and fifth patterns. You know, the only time you need to worry about this is if you have a chord that's got a flattened fifth or a sharpened fifth. So that'd be a diminished chord, uh, an augmented chord, minor seven flat five, 
and anything with a sharp five in it. So if you see a flat five or a sharp five in there or a diminished or augmented word, then you need to adjust the fifth. But apart from that, all the other common chords, standard root and fifth will do. So now no matter which note or string that we start on, we can see all of the roots and fifths available in that position. So if I was to use just a, a C major chord, okay? So C major down here, starting at the third fret of the A string again, we have the root third, uh, sorry, root fifth octave there. I can play around on that. And we also have the C up here, eighth fret of the E string. And I can play around on that. So or move between the two. Okay, so I'm just moving between and and obviously I can move up here and you know, but that's a bit extreme for for a bass line, but you know, moving between there Moving between those two, that's, uh, that's quite easy and quite useful. So now let's have a look at a simple bass line that you can work through to help you memorize those patterns and uh, start applying them, okay? So the first bass line is gonna sound like this. Two, three, four. So let's have a look through that bass line. So the chord progression, as I've said before, is C major, A minor, F major, G major, one, six, four, five in, uh, in C, and uh, it's two bars for each chord. And the rhythm that we're gonna be using is like this. Two, three, four. Okay, so we're just using that rhythm and just applying some of the notes. So let's have a look at the C first of all, the C chord. So we start on the C, third fret of the A string, then we come up to the G, the fifth fret of the D string, up to the octave C there, fifth fret of the G string, and we play that twice. So the, with the rhythm we have two, three, four, two, three, four, Okay, and I'm using the first finger for the uh, C there, and then I'm barring with the fourth finger for the fifth and the octave. Uh, but if you have any problems, you know, just find your own with, with whichever uh, fingers that you need to use if you want to use the third finger and the fourth finger separately. But uh, I tend to use that rocking motion with the fourth finger to move from one to the other. So, okay. Then we come back down to the G, fifth fret of the D string, to come back to the C. So. C, G, C, C, G, C, okay? Then for the second bar, we come down to the uh, G below. So this is the fifth below, so. Okay. C, G, C, C, and then we play the G above and then the G below again. So we've got. So all together, I'll just play that round and round. So that just gets you used to playing within that set of notes that we've gone through. You know, the uh, root note, fifth below, fifth above, and the octave above. That palette of notes there, we're just getting used to playing and applying those notes to the bass line. Next, for the A minor, we go for the A there, the fifth fret of the E string. We come up just as we did with the C. So we've got A, E, A, root, fifth, octave. 
Then we come up to the fifth, the ninth fret of the uh, of the G string. So this is the ninth fret. It's the E. So and then back to the octave A there at the seventh fret of the D string. And all of this is written in the uh, in the sheet music and tablature that you can download. Just hit the link below. So. And then we come down to the fifth again. Back up to the octave twice. And then we come down fifth and root note. So. Okay, and then we're ready to move to the next chord. So, again. Okay, and the fingering could be a little bit weird for this. So you, you have a choice. You can play the A and then move up to the first finger for the fifth and the octave, which sets you up ready to play the fifth at the top. And then you can move back to the fourth finger for coming down. So. Okay, so that's the line. And then all we're gonna do is move that exact same line to the F and then to the G, okay? So when I do that, I'll start with the A minor, then the F and the G. We have two, three, four. And then we're back to the C, okay? So, through the whole bass line, C major, A minor, F major, G major, slowly, two, three, four. So let's try that with the backing track. we can try a little variation on that bass line just using a little 16th note rhythm, a kind of bu -bu bum kind of uh, rhythm uh, to give us just a little bit more interest. So all we're going to do is put a couple of repeated notes on various parts of the bar. So it's going to be the same bass line essentially but just with a couple of repeats. So I'll just work through the bass line first of all. So we have two, three, four. So you can hear those little bubba bum kind of rhythms. So let's quickly work through those lines. So for the C, originally we had. Now we have. So there's a double note there, a repeated note on the G coming back to the C. So slowly. Okay. Then we have another one on the G when we come back. So I'll just play the whole uh, line. Okay, so we've got uh, the uh, two notes there on the G 
and then drop it down for the octave. So that's a bit of a jump afterwards, uh, you know, after you've played them to come back down, but just practice it and you'll get it. So all together, slowly, that line. Again, two, three, four. And now if we look at the A minor, so start on the A, the original line sounded like this. But now we have a double note up here at the E, uh, at the ninth fret, so we have. So it's a double note coming back uh, to the root note there. And then when we come down, Double note again on the uh, fifth there, on the E and the, uh, what's that, seventh fret of the A string, so. Okay, and then we're back to the root note. So, and then we, we just move that, uh, we just move that to each uh, F major and G major, just through the chords. So if we move down to F major. And then to G. So now let's just try that whole bass line with the backing track. A four. Lastly, as a tougher variation, just to get used to uh, moving with the 16th note kind of rhythms, we're going to use a very James Jameson style kind of lick, uh, to, we're going to incorporate that into it, that uh, jumps down through the notes, okay? So we're not playing repeated notes, we're actually coming across the strings. So uh, this one's a little tougher, so, you know, make sure you move through the other two uh, bass lines first before trying this one, because it is quite tough. So um, this one's going to sound like this, two, three, four. So for the C major, we're going to start at the C there and play exactly as we did with the uh, with the previous bass lines. Okay, so up to the octave through the fifth, so root, fifth octave, then back down. But when we get back down to the root note, we play the little sixteenth note line. Okay, which is that. So it's G, C, G, C. So G, fifth fret of the D string, C, fifth fret of the G string, D, uh, sorry, G, fifth fret of the D string, and back to C, third fret of the A string. So. So fifth octave, fifth root. And uh, to get this down, really, you need to play first finger, second finger, first finger. So one, two, one of the finger picking hand. Two, one, and then rake back onto the C, okay? So it's one, two, one, one. So it's worth just practicing that little move in itself. Okay, then when you add it to the bass line, Okay, so that's a cool little move, and uh, then we can just go back down to the G and then back up to the C. So that would sound like this, slowly. Okay. Okay, and I'm just rocking my finger backwards and forwards, uh, back and forth, the first finger there, from the C, down to the G, and then back. Sorry, 
<laughs> okay, so there's a lot of movement going on there with the hand, so it'll take a little bit of practice. Uh, uh, but, you know, just uh, practice, 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 and you'll get it. So, two, three, four. So now for the A minor, we just play exactly the same kind of uh, pattern that we've played before. So that's all the same as before, but then we, we use the same pattern that we've played on the C. So fifth octave, fifth root, using that same pattern of one, two, one rake. So it's the same move, then fifth root. Okay, so. And as I've said before, if you're having any problem following any of this, just download the lesson material from talkingbass.net. Just follow that link below. So again, okay, two, three, four. Okay. So then all we have to do is move that pattern from the A minor to the F and the G. Okay, so all together, C, A minor, F, G, we have two, three, four. Try that round and round and round. So let's try it with the backing track. Two, three, four. Okay, so obviously these are just sample bass lines to help, uh, you know, seeing those notes around a root note. They're, you know, not intended as riffs that you're going to use, you know, every time you have to play a bass line. The main thing to remember is the pattern of roots and fifths in a position, and uh, you want to try using them more sparingly. Uh, then you can also, you know, start adding the 16th note rhythms in here and there. So. Here I'll just play round and round and I'll try to use the notes that we looked at and I'll start really basic and then just gradually add to it, okay? So with the backing track.
Okay, please like this lesson if it's helped and subscribe for updates on weekly lesson releases. Also go on over to TalkingBass.net for hundreds of more lessons just like this and subscribe for free for all those exclusive bass resources. Okay, see you later.